Hello, students. Let's continue on um, the lecture. Let's go to uh, the next topic. Let me share the screen. Okay, let's do it. Let's go to uh, geometric optics. In this case, we're dealing with reflection and refraction. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's go for reflection. And in this case, we have a source of light. And let's see how light propagates. We have different ways. How do we represent this uh, propagation? One is uh, taking the waves in spheric, as a spherical waves, where these are called the wave front. Also, we can use waves to represent the wave propagation, right, or the light propagation. Uh, in this case, the um, ray is perpendicular to the wave front, right? It's perpendicular to this wave front. And also, we have the traditional. Uh, wave for light. Uh, in this uh, analysis, uh, let's use rays to describe right uh, some properties for reflection. Let's see types of reflections. We have two types. One is a specular uh, reflection. And in this case, uh, the uh, surface uh, is very smooth, like the mirror. And we have that the rays are reflected at the same angle. That's the case for specular reflection. Let's go for diffuse reflection. In this case, the surface is not like at the mirror, right? Uh, the surface reflect light at different angles, like in this case. Okay. Now let's go for the lows of reflection. Let's use two lows. In this case, we have a plane mirror and uh, we have the normal, remember, uh, in many cases, when we have surfaces, one of the lines that is used as a reference is the normal. It's perpendicular to the surface. And then if we have the incident in the reflected ray, it's found that the angles relative with respect to the normal are the same. The incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. And that's the first law of reflection. Let's go for the second one. The normal, the incident rate and the reflected rate always lie in the same plane, correct? So this is the plane right here. It doesn't go right one like this. They, they go on the, they lie on the same plane, great. Now let's go for images produced by uh, plane mirrors. Let's do it. Um, these are the statements for these images. The images are bright. Uh, the image is the same size as the object. The image is located as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. Let's see it. So again, we have the mirror and uh, we have an object. We have light coming from the object. It goes to an observer, correct? We have the observer at that position. And this is the object with height HO. Now the observer is looking at the mirror, but he sees, he sees or she sees, right? Um, that the image is behind the mirror, right? And because of that, this is called the virtual image because no real light is forming this image. Light is coming to the mirror and is reflected toward the object. Although in this case, we are going by what right? light's coming from, from the object, reflect on the mirror, right? And goes to, the eye to the observer, correct? But light right here is on this medium, this side. We have another side right here. No light is going through this side, but we see, or the observer sees the uh, image right here behind. That's why we call this virtual image. And it has a height of HI. And we have the distances of this to, uh, um, object, the object in the virtual image, respect to the uh, mirror, mirror, the plane mirror. And we have these conditions, DO equals to DI, uh, HO equals to HI, right? And this is called magnification, HI over HO. Okay, and these are the definitions, right, for, for these quantities, correct? And we have the magnification. 
Now let's go to virtual image. A virtual image, image with no light rays emanating from it. So no, no light rays are, are emanating from this image, right? Are coming or emanating from the object. What about the real image? Well, in this case, uh, image from which all light, all light rays actually do emanate. This image can be projected into a screen. Right here, this image, virtual, we cannot project it into a screen. Imagine that you use a screen right here behind the mirror and try to, to uh, project the image on that screen. It's gonna be impossible. Why? Because the image is virtual. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to spherical mirrors. We have more in interesting features on these type of mirrors. In this case, we have a sphere made of glass and we cut the sphere one fraction, one section, and we have this uh, the spherical mirror. We have this um, diameter, correct? We have the radius, and we have these two points. The, this point is the center curvature, and this point is called the focal point. It's the point where the light is reflected when uh, the observer is far away, and is where is the image located. And if the reflecting side, side is the inner side is concave, also it's called um, converging mirror. And if the reflecting surface is the outer surface is called the convex or diverging mirror. Let's label this point to uh, specify important features on this uh, type of uh, mirror. We have R is the radius, C the center of curvature, F is the focal point, V is the vertex, AV is the aperture, uh, CV is the principal or optical axis, and FV is the focal length. Okay, it's found also that the focal length is equal to radius divided by two. Imagine now that we have these rays. Again, and these are parallel rays, means that these are coming from a far away, a far away object. Correct? Perfect. And this simplifies the calculation. You will see it. Again, we have a rays parallel at the beginning, and these are reflected by this uh, convex uh, mirror. See, the, uh, the rays reflected diverge. But if we're going backward, they looks like they meet in one point. The point where they look to meet is called the focal point. And it's the point where we expect to have the image for an object that is far away from the lens, from the, from the mirror. Okay, great. Um, convex mirror, diverging mirror, correct. Now let's go for a converging mirror, right, or concave. The same thing, right? At the beginning, we have this uh, plane rays, um, parallel rays, correct? Meaning that they're coming from an uh, object that is far away. And as you can see, the rays are reflected and meet in one point. Again, that's the point of the focal point, And that's the point also for the image for this particular case. These are particular cases. And again, the distance from the focal point to the vertex is called the uh, Focal length. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to, uh, and see how images are found by a ray tracing. Okay, let's do it. So we have an object. Now we have this a concave mirror, correct? And we have these two points, which is the focal uh, focal point and the center of curvature. Uh, we have one ray. Um, when the ray is parallel to the uh, principal axis, the ray is reflected toward the focal point. Now we have another ray. When the ray goes to the vertex, it's reflected in the same angle as the incident angle. We have another ray. When the ray go, passes through the focal point, the ray is reflected parallel to the optical axis. Then we have the last one. The ray that passes through the center or curvature is reflected in the same direction. Right now, uh, the point where all of these rays meet or looks to meet in some cases uh, is the position or the point for the image. The image is located at that point. And in this case, as you can see, 
real light is coming and passing through this point where the image is. So because a real light is forming or creating this image, the image is real. Okay, perfect. Now let's see what happens when we change the position of the object with respect to the focal point. For example, let's place the object exactly at one focal length at the focal point. Again, let's use this rays to find the image. Again, it is, uh, uh, the, the ray is parallel to the optical end, uh, axis. Uh, it's gonna be reflected toward the focal point, right? Like right here, parallel to the focal point, to the focal point, parallel. We, we can go backward. Okay, perfect. And um, let's see, Let, now let's go to the vertex. When it goes to the vertex, right, it's reflected at the same angle. But look, in this case, these two rays are parallel, means that they never uh, uh, meet, right? They never uh, touch each other like right here. So means that no image is formed. Only when the rays meet in one point, we can find or create an image, right? But in this case, we say then that the image is at infinity when the rays are parallel. This is found from the formula. Okay, so no interception, no rays, no image. No, no interception arrays, no image. Okay, wait. Now, uh, let's see what happens when we have a noise position of the uh, object. Now, the object is going to be in between the vertex, right, and the focal point. Let's see what happens. Well, the same thing, we use a ray parallel to the principal axis, is reflected toward the focal point. Now, we go toward the vertex again, and it's reflected with the same angle. But look, in this direction, these two rays diverge. They never meet. Uh, what happens if we're going backward? If we're going backward, they looks to meet at that position. So that is the position for the image. So the image is located at that position and it's called, again, a virtual image because no real light is going behind the mirror to form the image. Right here, yes, look, right here we have light. It's going, it's reflected and passes this point. That's why it's real, but right here light is reflected and goes to this uh, direction in this side of the mirror, not behind, but the image is behind. Then the, the image is virtual. How we can also detect that an image is virtual? The image is virtual if the image is upright respect to the object. If the image is upside down or inverted respect to the object, the image is real. Okay, perfect. Now let's go for the case when we have a convex mirror. Again, we have uh, the two points, a focal point and uh, a center curvature. We have the object, again, is reflected, but it looks like it's coming from the uh, focal point. That's the, um, the conditions right here. And then imagine that we're going to the focal point, how it's reflected parallel to the principal axis, right? Like right here, right? Focal point parallel, yes. Okay, now what happens? Well, in this direction, these two rays reflected diverge, but when we're going backward, these two rays looks to meet at that position, right? And that position is for the image. And you can see the image is upright, so the image and also is behind the mirror, uh, also the image is virtual. Okay, now let's go to find the formula, the equation for the mirror. Again, we have a concave mirror. We have uh, the focal point. And we have an object at some distance from the mirror. And then we use this array, which goes and passes through the focal point and is reflected parallel. Also, let's locate the image similar to this case, right? The image is a little bit um, uh, away from the focal point. And imagine that's the image and has this, this height hi. This image is real. Okay, now because we're looking for uh, a triangle, similar triangles, let's take the distance or the height of the image right at this position to make two, two triangles, right? And look, these are, they have the same angle. Again, means that these are similar triangles. And these are the distances. We have the distance uh, uh, again, um, 
object mirror, image mirror, and focal point uh, the mirror, right? We have all of these distances. Now let's find equations for these two triangles. These are again similar triangles. Let's go for the first one. Let's find the tangent theta. Tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, but adjacent is what is the O minus the focal length, right? Minus this distance, give us this distance for this triangle. Now let's go for the other triangle, the little one right here. What is tangent? Tangent is uh, HI over this distance. What is this distance? Well, that distance is the focal length. Perfect. We use negative right here because look, the image is upside down. So we indicate that using the negative sign right here. That's the convention. Okay, now because these two angles are the same, again, it's the same angles. So tangent theta must be the same, means what? That um, negative HI over F is equals to HO over DO minus F. From here, we rearrange it in this way. And we use cross multiply, and what do we have? Negative HO over HI is equals to uh, DO minus F divided by F, the focal length. All right, okay. Now let's go for another um, set, another ray, right? And find um, another set of equations, right? In this case, let's go to, toward the vertex and the, um, the ray is reflected with the same angle. All right, and imagine that's the image right here. Uh, imagine it's the same case as right here, All right? So uh, we can see that these two angles are the same. Then again, we have the distances. Now it's gonna be um, the I and uh, the O. Perfect. Now let's work with these two triangles. Again, these are similar, but uh, similar triangles. Again, a tangent theta for the largest one is equals to H O over D O. And what about for the little one? It's gonna be H I over D I, right? Then we use negatives right here. And then from here, we solve for uh, uh, H O over H I, and it's found to be equals to D O over D I. Again, uh, H O over H I is already right here, right? So it means that, this, that these two quantities, this one and this one, are the same, are equal. Over here, what do we have? One more time, D over D I is equals to D O minus F divided by F, the focal length. And finally, we have the uh, mirrors equation. Yeah, is one over D O plus one over D I equals to one over F. This is very important equation. It's also important for lenses, it's the same. Okay, great, also for, Magnification, this is the definition. We use magnification equals to HI over HO or equals to negative DI over DO. Perfect. Now let's go to sign convention. When um, uh, we use, we use uh, the focal length positive for concave meters and negative for convex meters. Also, DO is positive for real object and negative for virtual object. Later, I'm gonna show you um, how we represent this virtual object. Okay, three, DI is positive for real images and negative for virtual images. And magnification is positive for upright images and negative for inverted images. H uh, is positive for upright images and negative for invert images. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And well, with this, we finish this session. The next session is gonna be on refraction. Okay, see you in the next video for a refraction. Okay, bye.